as we develop our understanding of AngularJS, we're beginning to gain insight into what's actually happening in the browser at the first load of Angular, when it's being initialized, what's happening when things are being compiled. And so one thing you may or may not have noticed is what's happening right as the page actually loads. Not a soft load, but a hard load where the application has to fetch all the JavaScript files, including Angular and things like this. And you might be noticing that the template is flashing. So let's look at this example here. So it's very, very simple. So we have our main controller again. We have a my data span. And we're simply saying this is some data in the controller. It's as simple as it gets. There's nothing here you haven't seen before. AngularJS is essentially an HTML compiler. And it's going to parse the DOM, look for things that it's going to need to augment or replace or things like that. And of course, with interpolation, this is certainly one of these things. When the view is finished rendering, this entire thing is going to be replaced by a string. This is some data when it's done. But the question is, when is when it's done actually happening? Because, of course, Angular has to download, it has to be initialized, then it has to parse a DOM. These operations are taking non-trivial amounts of time. And so while that's happening, it's possible that this unrendered template is being presented to the user, which, of course, looks horrible. And so there are ways to get around it, and one of these is ng-cloak. Up until this point, we've been using angular.min.js, which on a hard page reload is not really showing any latency. So let's get rid of the minified version and let's just use the regular versions. Do a hard page reload. And sure enough, we're seeing the template flash. You can see it there, there, there. AngularJS is being fetched and initialized. And while that's happening, we're seeing the template flash for a second. Of course, this is undesirable because this is going to be confusing the user. So how do we get around this? Well, it's very simple. It's by using ng-cloak. ng-cloak is preventing the Angular HTML template from being displayed by the browser in its raw form while the application is loading. And once the application loads, then it's going to say, okay, I have loaded. Now you can show all of the things that I've finished rendering. Anything that's at this level or beneath it. So we can go div pay there inside there. This is not going to show, but we're still seeing the flash. And so this is very simply because you have to add a CSS rule. This is listed in the documentation. I'm not going to go through this, but you simply add this and it's going to augment the ng cloak directive. And when you refresh it, you're going to see that this is being cloaked. It's being hidden until it's ready. And this includes this div, which recall is inside the ng cloak element. And we can see that the latency of loading AngularJS is being concealed by the ng-cloak. And only once everything is ready is it being presented. So we're never seeing the template. We're never seeing any uncompiled stuff. And this is terrific because the user is then not going to be exposed to any of the ugliness of an uncompiled AngularJS template, as you might expect. This is an easy solution to the problem, but it brings up an important point, which is worth mentioning here, which is that as you start to build out more and more complicated Angular applications, you're going to start experiencing startup latency, various latencies in your application that are going to be asynchronous and cause weird things to happen when things are loading or waiting for things to return or things like this. And you need to be aware of this effect on the user because you're going to be experiencing things like I just presented to you where things aren't loading or things aren't ready to be seen or things are loading asynchronously. And it's going to be confusing to the user. So Angular provides a lot of tools for you to handle these inconsistencies. So you can conceal these from the user, but it does take a little bit of overhead. In this case, ng-cloak is a very clean solution for a fairly simple problem. But as we get into routing and resolutions, things like this, you're going to be experiencing more and more of this. And so you need to be aware of this effect on the user as you move forward and build more and more complicated Angular applications.